I'm with Basma Baham from the Holy Land Handicraft Cooperative. Now, Basma, what is the Holy Land Handicraft Cooperative? Yeah, the Holy Land, it's, it's a cooperative. It was founded in the 81. The aims it was to, to keep, to try as much as we can to give work to our people and to show them how they can work together. So uh, now the cooperative, they have 35 members. Each one has their workshop and we are all the time trying to give us the best of what we can do. By the way, now we are not just giving to them we are supporting uh, maybe 2,000 people in the area, in Naples, Bet- Bethlehem area, and in Hebron. One of the things that we are doing is to promote their articles, and also at the same time, we are working with them with several projects. One of them, which is very important, and I always uh, like to mention it, is um, we are a fair trade organization. The fair trade have 10 principles, equality of gender, fair price, and one of them is work conditions. The workshops, when they are working, they don't have a good conditions. So we are trying to do our best to change this. At the beginning, it was not easy for us because we didn't have studies to do it. So we start to do it this with the Catholic Relief Services and with the HCEF and with our organization. Until now, we have improved 13 workshops. It means that in each ma- machine, for example, the dust it was coming to them, we put a kind of vacuum. Also, one of the 10 fair trade principles is to take care about the environment. They were putting by tubes all the dust outside. Now we put like a tank outside when with the tubes when all the dust is going inside. Also, we improved the painting room. A lot of people were claiming about the, you know, the when they were using painting the, the wood or something like that. We made a very nice uh, g- room for the painting room. And also in, we installed the uh, upstairs, something that is not damaging the environment. What sort of handicrafts are in the cooperative? The olive wood, the mother of pearl, embroidery and the ceramic. And is this helping to alleviate poverty? Yes, it is, of course, this kind of work is one of the best income to Bethlehem area, if we are going to speak especially about the olive wood and the, for the ceramic from Hebron. This is our tradition that we are trying to keep it on from two generations. And really, it's giving a very good income. We many times we are mentioning that this is our petrol. It's the name. It's as like if you are going to go around now, you will come. You will find out that in each house you will find a, there is a workshop. Mm, there maybe can be a lot of people that are working something else, and at the at their free time they are making this kind of work. The good thing that we are doing is here that we are not accepting to take any item if we are not calculating the cost of the price. This is why we are a fair trade organization. We have to know if we are fair with the price. So this is why also it's helping them for the income. Yeah. Does this help to keep people connected to the land? Yes, it is helping. But if we are going to use it in the right way, because there is a lot of other people that are taking their products and they don't want to pay a good price. So at the end, they are losing money and they have to close their place. So one of the things that we are doing is in order to keep them working, to give a fair price, to improve the place when they are working. And when they feel that there are some organization or people that are taking about these kind of things, they maybe will think to, to be here and not to immigrate. By the way, one of the big problems that we are facing in Palestine, let's say, not our organization, is the immigration. In our cooperative, our Muslims and Christians, we are working all together. But we have a big problem, let's say, with the uh, Christianity. They are immigrated. In the past, we were like 20%, and now we are 0.5%. So uh, many times we are thinking how these places will look if some people will come from outside tourism and they will find out that there are no Christian people waiting for them. Uh, How we are going to take care about the Nativity Church and all these places that it means not just a lot for us. This means a lot for all over the world. I know a lot of people that are saving their money just to come here to see the place when Jesus was born. So I think that in this kind of things, it's not easy for us to, to work alone. Many times I am asking really to many of the organizations that are working, Catholic or Christian organizations that are working outside, to help us to keep the Christianity people here. Again, we have to mention that Palestinians are Christians and Muslims. But 
what is in challenge and what is the the thing that we have to think about it, how to, to help is that if the Christian Christian people are going to immigrate it as they are doing now, I think that in 10 years or 15 years, let's say, they are not going to be Palestinian Christian people here. Mm. And that's very sad, isn't it? This is the place yeah. where Jesus was born and yeah. Christians are diminishing. Yes. This is the question. Jesus was born here. Jesus dead and resuscitated here. So this means a lot for us. And how also... Many times I imagine myself about the pilgrims, people that are coming here, that they want to see, you know, the, the these kind of places. So we have to be here. We have, and it's very nice in the Christ, Christmas time when we are celebrating, when you, you see the voices count and all the people are going around. We are giving, we feel it. We feel this time, Yani, what this land means for us and for a lot of people. But we are also feeling that each time, are less people there. So we really ha- feel that there are the organizations that they have to help us to, li- to really keep Christian Christianity here. Is there strength and a benefit in being in a cooperative? Yes, of course, yes. When they feel that there is an organization like our organization and they, it's giving a fair price, they feel comfortable. And many times when they are bringing the price here, they know that they can have a good price. Of course, many times we are telling, there are a lot of people that are giving a very high price. So are telling, please, we want to give you a fair price, but at the same time, help us to to be competitor in the market because, you know, a, any other is giving another pr- prices. So the good things that we are doing also here is that we have a souvenir here. This is um, helping the local market, but you know, the situation here now you are making the interview and may, maybe it will change we don't have a stability so we also are sending uh, we have a lot of customers outside in europe in uh, in, uh, in in in, uh, in the, the state in the united states in many countries outside so these kind of things are supporting our people when the situation changed here so also we are sending a lot of our products abroad so this is what is giving stability to them we have some um, organizations that are all the time taking our products so then they started to um, to feel that okay when they are coming oh you received an order from this and from this they know that this organization at least is going to to make big orders and they have work something to do during the year yeah is it difficult to export out of palestine now maybe it is easier maybe to to bring import it's uh, more difficult when you are bringing things to to here to export also is not easy but what i have to mention is that we don't have border mm. if we are going to send a small letter outside it has to be through israel mm. because we don't have border so we have to to send what it it make it more expensive that we have to give it directly to broker israeli broker or to give it to a Palestinian broker and from the Palestinian broker to the Israeli broker and then so so. Mm. This is the cost because it, there is an <laughs> intermediate and also the transportation and all these things, It's the cost is higher. Mm. Yeah. Are countries like China a problem yeah. to cheap imports? Of course, yes. One of the issues that we are trying to improve and we spoke with the Ministry of Tourism and with many other organizations that we have to make a stamp for us. We started to do this with BIS, an Italian organization, but until now we are don't fi- we don't know how to do it in the right way. We need a stamp. We don't want to to mention that the China's articles not to come here because I think that this is not fair also. It can come here, but we, what is not fair it's to that they are selling this kind of product as a Palestinian product. Mm. And I think that this is also damaging our reputation. When a pilgrim or a tourism or someone will come here and will take a product that is it's f- from China, and then when he, and we will tell them that this is olive wood or whatever, and it is handicraft, and they will return to their home and they will find out that it's not olive wood and it's not handmade, they will think, oh, the Palestinians are not good people. Mm. So what we have to do, it's, we can't put the China's product, but it has to be recognized. This is China, this is Palestinian. Mm. So then the, any people that is coming from outside, they will have the right to choose. I want the shipper or I want the Palestinian product. So this is one of the things that we, we have to do it and we are trying to, to improve it. But we have to do it together. We have to find people who can help us with this. Yeah. 
Do many producers have cash flow problems? Yes, in many cases they have it because the wood it's uh, it's expensive. In some cases we can support them to buy it, but then we will start to to reduce it from the products that we are taking from them. But yeah, in some cases they have, but there is a difference. We have some um, workshops that they are they have a, a good situation, so they are and they are many others that they do not and they just depend from us so we are many times working with the social issues is the handcraft industry in danger of disappearing and are there less people working in handcraft today than there was say let's 20 years ago uh, yeah especially the mother of pearl the mother of pearl it's the raw material is very expensive and in many countries outside com- countries they are telling that this is against the environment because you know it's coming from the sea and so on. So this is why it's disappearing. Also, the way that they are using this, when they are working with with the mother of pearl, it's damaging their health. Uh, This is why we tried and we made, sorry, one of the workshops in a very good situation. We changed all the place when they are working, but uh, it's disappearing. I think in the past it was maybe 50 in just in this area. And now you maybe will find just maybe 10 or not more the olive wood also we are trying to keep it because this all of this kind of works is our tradition but the problem that it has of course with the competition when people start to comparing with the tunis uh, olive wood or with the china or whatever so the, the raw material is expensive and the problem that again that we have is that people are working without thinking uh, giving any price so at the end they feel that they are losing money so they have to close mm. yeah, so they have to learn how to calculate the price yeah mm. how old are some of these handcraft industries here like the woodwork factories and mother of pearl oh it's uh, i think this is mentioned in our page i think maybe the olive wood is from many centuries ago mm. and it's yeah, I mean, many many years ago mm. yeah, like you can make in 400 or 1500 years that they are working this kind of work yeah, and I am not sure about how much but yeah it's very it's old yeah, and they also the mother of pearl and yeah the mother of pearl they started to do it by Franciscans that came from Italy I think so mm-hmm. are you making a difference in the community Yes, <laughs> because we are a fair trade organization. They feel that we, when we are buying their products, we are fair. We are giving a fair price. And the second thing is that we are trying as much as we can to give gender equality. Mm. That woman, by the way, woman in Palestine is very active. And I think that this is something that you may know because in many other Arab countries, the woman is not able to do a lot of things. But maybe in our country, as an occupied country and political situation, maybe the woman, in many cases, is the only income. Mm. Because, you know, the situation that it may have the men, maybe they can be at the prison or they are they are not able to move. So in many cases, the woman, she is the empowerment she had. But we also need to improve it. And also, if we are going to, to, to speak, about the think the articles that they have to change, uh, maybe all the time they are thinking to do re- religious articles mm. because you know the natural of our place. Yeah. So we are trying to change their mentality that they also have to do something else. Mm. But what I am with the artisans, for example, a few m- weeks ago, we participated with a very important competition, Muhammad Awards in uh, New Delhi. And out of the 75 that they made the competition, we took the third place. Wow. Yeah, and these were, were with articles that the design. We make the design with with the Netherlands with an organization, and we start when we started to do that. It was really very incredible because people were telling Basma, "The wood we can't paint it. It would not look good." So we told, "No, please just let try." And the impact it was really very good. People like it a lot, mm. and so. Here, the thing is that also the people want to see the impact, want to be, see the change. They, want, don't, they don't want to start with something until they will not see the difference, the impact. Yeah. We, we faced the same case with the work conditions at the beginning. They, uh, we are working with this several years, so why you are going to change? But then they, when they saw the impact, the difference, they started to understand it. And now all the people, and many times people are coming here from many workshops, Basma, I listened that you are making this. Please put our name, come and see how we are working. We want to improve this. Yeah. What's your prayer for the future of the Palestinian 
industries? I thank God I am always optimistic. If we are going to face this, I think that the first thing that we can to do is we have to think about peace. And we have to think also about our rights. If this will come, and I am, sh- I am sure that will come soon, Yanni, will, um, I think that our opportunities will be better and things will change here. Because really it's not easy. It's not easy for us to feel that someone that's coming from outside have more rights than us. People that are coming from outside are able to move for all over the world and we have restrictions. So this is what's, what is making for us sometimes feeling different. But I am sure that all these kind of things will change and we have to think that we have to work with it. We have to work with the change. We have to work to work that this will come one time and I hope that it will come. Yeah. Okay, Basma, thank you very much. Welcome. You are welcome. Thank you for the interview, really.